Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the show. We got a very special guest, Mr. Dave Lombardo, formerly of Slayer, currently of Mr. Bungle. Absolutely killing it out there with Bungle. I hope you got to see a show. If you didn't and you want to see Scott Ian, you could come to <laughs> Milwaukee Metal Fest Saturday. Scott's got to go from uh, Bungle right into Anthrax mode. But oh, he's, that's crazy. Yeah, he's Double good duty. like that. But uh, you could have heard this way sooner over at gasdigital.com. We got the new website up, so go check it out. And uh, check out the bonus content say, uh, so, la, 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 section. It's a sell, it's a, there's a selection of bonus content in the bonus content section. Bam. Would you agree? <laughs> there certainly is. We got, we got movies, we got music, we got episodes that can't go out to the re- regular public. Go check it out over at gasdigital.com. Use promo code Josta. Yeah. And you could have heard this episode with Dave Lombardo much sooner. And you could have heard all about his uh, new album, Rights of Percussion, the first ever solo album from the one and only Dave Lombardo, who is our guest on today's show. And uh, and yeah, listen, let us know what you think of this episode. Let us know if you're coming to Milwaukee Metal Fest this weekend. If you are and you haven't gotten your tickets yet, go to the rave.com slash metal fest. And if you want to get meet and greet upgrades, go to martyrstore.net. The link is always in the show notes. And you can, uh, yeah, you can meet. I think now we added one for Frozen Soul. We added one for Misery Index. There's a bunch on there. Raven's going to be in the house, the legendary Raven. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, Dino's going to actually come sign on Friday. We have um, Biohazard's doing a signing now on Friday as well. They might even stay for Saturday and do a signing, which would be great. But just keep checking the rave.com slash metal fest. The sale ends Wednesday, though, if you want 25% off your tickets and then to, to upgrade for a meet and greet, martyrstore.net. And I got to thank our sponsor of not only the metal fest that's coming back to Milwaukee for the first time in many, many years, but also of this podcast I'm talking about Century Media. And today's show is brought to you by the one and only Century Media Records who has been putting out tons of great records. The new Frozen Soul is out. Glacial Domination is already one of my top releases of the year. I can already tell it could be album of the year. And they they might end up being the people's headliner Saturday, May 27th, this Saturday at Milwaukee Metal Fest. Go get it at centurymedia.store. Also check out new releases from Unearth, Jesus Peace, and recent releases from great bands like Suicide Silence and Lauren Ashore. Chris Garza is going to be in the house, live podcast on the Josta Show, Sunday, May 28th. You'll see it over at martyrstore.net if you want to reserve your seat at Milwaukee Metal Fest. Also got to thank Monarch Heavy. MonarchHeavy.com is bringing us today's show. Brian's all about that Crowbar Black Label Society action. I love it, man. They got all, all my favorite bands growing up on one label right now. And I, Dude, I'm they got Ace. They got Ace Fraley on, on, on Monarch Heavy now. How cool is that? Yeah. And Sam Nuri, great band playing the pre-party this Thursday. You can get their new album, Desiderium. Use code 666 at monarchheavy.com. The link will be in the show notes, and the code is very easy to remember. The number of the beast gets you 15% off. That's code 666 at monarchheavy.com. Also want to thank another one of our great Metal Fest sponsors, Metal Blade. And Metal Blade is killing it right now. They got the new Death Ray Vision coming out that's got mike d from kill switch new singer sounds great you can go to metalblade.com slash death ray vision and also suggest you check out some of their artists at milwaukee metal fest like go whore who are playing friday and they are going to absolutely crush it heavy as hell man the festival the lineup for the festival is incredible yeah, and it's and it's uh, it's it's going to be great. It's not going to be like this Vegas festival where you're outdoors. This is all indoors, AC, and the the Raves done a lot of nice updates. It's going to be a lot of fun. Also, got to thank Indie Merch Store, one of our biggest vendors and biggest sponsors of the podcast. So not only are they have they they got their own stage at Milwaukee Metal Fest, and right now they're killing it with so many new releases, restocks, and pre-orders. Go to IndieMerchStore.com, use the promo code JOSTA10, and you will save 10%. And come stop by their booth this weekend at Milwaukee Metal Fest. Big thanks to IndieMerchStore.com, promo code JOSTA10. Also got to thank Manscaped, manscaped Manscaped.com, promo code JOSTA, free shipping, plus 20% off. And uh, you can trim your beard, trim your asshole, trim trim your taint, trim the balls, trim the shaft, 
add a couple, you know, a couple centimeters. But you got to make sure you use the right tools, you know? You really do. Manscaped.com, promo code JASTA. All right. We got the one and only Dave Lombardo. You could have heard it way sooner. Sorry it took so long to get it out. But we love Dave. Support Dave. And check out his new album, Rights of Percussion. Now on to the show. My friend, the lead singer of Hate Breed, the infamous and notorious Jamie Jasta is in the building. That's what's up. Jamie Jasta from the metal band Hate Breed. That guy's famous. Coffee, death metal, and push-ups. That's Jamie Jasta. Remember Jamie Jasta? You know him. He's a podcaster, but he's also a metal man. I would say you need that. That shit is hard. That's okay. If you can't see us, we can see you. You look good. Woo! Thanks, man. Handsome and powerful. The handsome, the handsome Dave Lombardo back on the show. <laughs> Rights of percussion coming at you, May fifth on Ipecac. Yeah. And and dude, I I was immersed in it. I was loving it. I was like, man, this is this is it's out there, but it's out there in like the best possible way. Awesome. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, that's what that's what it's meant to be. It's supposed to be a a, a piece of uh, you know art, a piece of work, a, a journey through you know my rhythmical mind. Um, and you know, it's not it's it's not a piece uh, of work like to you know show off you know any kind of extreme chops or anything like that. You know. Uh, this is this is like a body of work, and um, you know it's. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I, I certainly did. I enjoyed the process, and and you know this whole process of of putting something that's your own solo record out, which I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal, you know. But everybody seems to be embracing it and enjoying it. So yeah, no, it's it's so like cinematic and takes you places visually in your mind, like. I mean, I'm, I, I don't know, like if you, you'll approve of this, but I think a lot of people are going to want to jam to this too. I, I feel like people are going to want to play along to it with like their bass and their guitars and their keyboards or whatever. Cause it's so, there's so, you do so many cool little things that are, that make you want to be creative and, and make you want to be collaborative. Like I was thinking about putting this on just to just to score things with it i could see directors even doing that like hearing this and and being like oh like i have a place for this in my film or in my in my tv show or whatever oh that'd be that'd be awesome i would love that you know i've had experience obviously with with uh film and television and um you know those experiences i think reinforced my confidence in in creating something like this and and also you know the confident the confidence of being fearless you know it's like i don't care what anybody thinks i don't i don't care what it does this is part of me and i'm just going to put it out so you know without any kind of uh, inhibitions or any kind of you know restraint and uh, luckily it it started developing like during pandemic when i didn't have any touring when i didn't have any distractions I did put out other records, you know, during that period, uh, but uh, it this the, you know pandemic really helped me focus on you know my own personal um, you know goals and 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 it, you know things I wanted to achieve in my life. Yeah, no, you can hear it. I think anything when you do something like like any any time I've heard people really immerse themselves into something that's like their own soul creation. And it comes out as authentic as this. You you could, it just, it comes through. And I even, even down to like the song titles, which I thought were really interesting. Um, Can you tell us like what, what made you decide on some of these titles? Like I loved Maunder in liminality because it it takes you to a place where you go, what does that mean? What is behind this? Maunder in liminality. You're like, in this place between, yeah, I would say life and death. And, mm. and you're just kind of like held there, you know, and, and you don't know whether to step into one side or the other, you know, and it's, uh, it's interesting, you know, because the titles are a culmination of uh, childhood experiences, um, 
you know, and, and you know, current experiences, Omiero, uh, which, which is a, not a potion, but maybe like, um, as like a spiritual cleansing, um, concoction of, you know, perfumes, herbs, it's almost a metaph metaphysical, um, you know, um, like, like I said, concoction. you basically bathe yourself with to eliminate any kind of uh, negativity in life. And it's, it's particularly used in, in, in uh, Afro-Cuban and Caribbean cultures you know, which is where I was born. So I'm familiar with things like that. So that, that's like a, uh, like a cleansing bath, you know? So it, it's, that's to me the, you know, that's where I brought that title. And I was familiar with that, you know, from growing up as a child in a Cuban household. And, um, you know, the, there's other ones, um, you know, you know, other titles that are very much connected to, to my childhood. Animismo. How do you say it? Anim animismo. Animismo. Yeah. yeah. The closer. The closer of the album. Yes. Uh, that one. Oh, man. Um, you know, I, I, I think if, if I'm correct, uh, oh, the title, you know, came from this, this state of mind I was in. And... Uh, and I, I can't remember exactly when or where, but it's just uh, it was just a, a, an onset of emotion. And, and I felt that word was, you know, best described, you know, that feeling at the time. But there's, you know, not only that, you know, not only the titles, but, you know, the percussion that I used. You know, the other day somebody somebody asked me, he said, is there something else listed on on the album um, that's not listed. Is there any instruments that you use that are not listed? And I basically uh, used a <laughs> guitar, you know, I laid the guitar, I didn't play it traditionally, but I laid it on its back and then I had this little drumstick and a slide and I was creating these sounds to go huh. on, you know, with really with, uh, on the record. And uh, there were, other instruments i use these chinese gongs and instead of hitting them normally i laid them on a on a wood floor and i hit them with with mallets um that's uh now that that particular song i'm releasing a video real soon probably by the time this comes out um and cool. it's consist of it consists of that too so it's it's just like i said i had so much fun doing it it's it's just one of those uh, one of those experiences that I that I hope to do again. You know, write some percussion too. You know, maybe yeah, you a whole different angle uh, to what I've learned uh, through this whole process. And uh, believe me, there's like things that I've I've thought about that I uh, it's like, oh man, I'm going to do this next time or next time it's going to be better. It's going to be like this. You know, so I'm already right. thinking about the future. But to try to fit, you know, a project uh, of that magnitude during touring, I'm going to need to take like some time off and uh, yeah. hopefully, you know, maybe move into a house isolated somewhere in a, on an obscure island and, you know, where there's a <laughs> lot of rain and clouds and, you know, a lot of, you know, dreary just feeling to really allow those uh, uh, musical uh, emotions just come out and release. Could, could you release this as like a, a sound pack? Like, could you release these samples? It seems like you've got so many cool sounds that people would want to use uh, and, and sample in their own recordings. Have you thought about doing anything like that? No, they could hire me if they want that, you know? <laughs> there you <laughs> go. You sample that. <laughs> you know, that's why I've been kind of like hesitant on ever doing a Dave Lombardo sample pack. It's like, well, then you wouldn't be able to hire me. You know, you got the samples. Why hire them? <laughs> right. So I'd rather be a part of the process than, uh, you know, than just hand them 
you know, the uh, the stems or or whatever. But yeah, all that is readily available. You know, I have all that on my hard drives, and um, you know, so it's uh, you know, it's a possibility, but I, I, I hardly think so. One of the things that was really cool, just because I've been listening to so many modern records, is that it's not so gritted out. It's not like it's just totally it's organic and it has that warmth and that feel. And I yeah. and I don't think I've heard anything recently with those types of like uh I guess you would call them kettle uh yeah, drums and Japanese kettle drums, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And and I think I think more bands should should do with it like this. It's it's almost like my ears have been fatigued to oh. all the sampled and and similarly sounding uh kits that they use for programming. I couldn't agree with you more. It's it's very disheartening and sad to see that the with so much technology and the ability to actually capture the sound of a real drum uh drummers are using samples and um you know i get it you know but man i just love that natural sound you know and i always go back to the bill wards to the john bonhams to the mitch mitchell to those classic albums that you used to crank on your Sirwin vega speakers and your marantz you know um you know power amp and just blast it and he just sounds so good and now everything just sounds so sterile, so uh, quantized, and uh, there's just no um, no room for any kind of um, emotion from the drummer or excitement. For example, when uh, I recorded um, World Painted Blood with Slayer, Christ, mm -hmm. Christ Illusion and World Painted Blood were the last ones that I actually recorded with a click track, last albums. So the Dead Crosses, the Bungles, uh, the Bungle Records, the Dead Cross Records, all of those didn't have a single click track in them. Um, all we had was a delay, just kind of to subconsciously help me, yeah, you know, in that to stay in that zone. Uh, but for the most part, you know, everything was, you know, wasn't on a click track. And but what they would do was start the song with a click. And then after we get past maybe the second verse and chorus before the lead or wherever the song was going, they would turn the click track off and allow me to take the song to its crescendo, its height, and then bring it back down again. And right. You know, that that's about to the extent that, you know, I uh, I would use a click track. So that's still, you know, stay, you know, keeping the song within, you know, a nice tempo for the verses and, and possibly the courses. But then when it gets exciting, you know, they take the leash off of me and it's yeah. like, Go. <laughs> right for the bridges for the solos for the yeah. third verses you let, yeah. you let that you know you let it go instead of keeping it and you know a clear example of of that back in years ago yeah uh, probably andy wallace and rick rubin and and all of us in slayer were in a room and and on seasons in the abyss uh, you know somebody had said well dave speeds up here and uh Ruben was like, well, it feels good. And Andy Wallace reaffirmed that by saying, well, in an orchestra, when the conductor is, is you know, is, is you know, conducting, obviously, the, the orchestra, uh, you have the emotion of the conductor and the music building. There's no click track. He is the conductor. So if it speeds up, it's the natural crescendo of the song. And so I made sure, you know, throughout this record. Um, so basically that whole uh, time, that moment in Slayer during the recording of Seasons, you know, it was like, it was okay for it to speed up a little bit. Yeah. A little, just to keep that excitement. And that's what you hear on those old and classic records. When you put a click track to the beginning of the song and a click track at the end, <laughs> it, it, it does not match. But it no. sure felt good, you know? 
Yeah, yep. no, and that and that's how it is with all those records. I think that's why fans are gravitating to those records, so especially like these these younger fans are finding the Metallicas and the Danzigs and the Slayers and the Megadeths, and they're and they're really getting into the nostalgia. And and you, it makes me wonder: is it because it's just so raw and authentic, and it's not so over processed and compressed and yeah. And um and to the grid and and without that human air and when I say human air I mean it in like the highest compliment because it's like the yeah. soul it's the soul of uh, the conductor is a great I love that you brought that up because that, that's a great I was always fascinated with those guys they they are the meter they are the the pulse of, which is the same same as the drummer the drummer yeah. is the one swinging the stick around and conducting the band so yeah you know he is the pulse. And if he's got his shit together, he could conduct his band and 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 direct them in, in, in the right tempo and you know and give them the right feel. So that's kind of my approach, you know, when I when I do play live. Uh it's like strap on, guys, or not strap on, you know, get on board, guys. Here we go. <laughs> that didn't sound right, did it? <laughs> Are you are you doing the um the Misfits shows like with Megadeth? Are you doing those? Yes, yes, I will be there. Awesome, yeah. I just saw those announced, and I was uh and Fear is on that. Like that's yeah. that's another thing. Like the punk stuff is coming back. Like people are finding all the old punk records, and that's kind of like the the heart and soul of those early punk records was that they would go off the rails. Like I was. <laughs> Uh, even even the early death metal stuff too like i just was listening to the eyes of horror ep possessed the one that satriani produced and i was listening to it with a drummer and he looked at me like every time it was like because that there's a bunch of parts where it goes totally off the rails yeah yeah and, and i'm like that's what makes this badass <laughs> yeah it, it it actually that's that's what it is but you know we've become so uh you know analytical about every single little section that um you know you kind of lose that human touch and that human feel although all technology is is phenomenal that's one thing i've learned from working on rights of percussion is that the technology that's available out there is is unbelievable but to learn not to overuse it or if you do use it, just, oh, I, I just need to use this right here in this little section because it's blatantly fucked up. It's off, yeah. you know, so <laughs> I need to fix it. Although the whole take was, the feeling was amazing. I need to fix this. So you find ways, you know, to, to repair it, to keep the body of, and the excitement of that particular piece of the song. Um, so you can overuse the technology and you can't abuse it i think key at this point uh in in, in an engineer's uh career musician's career is to know when to use it when not to use it and try to keep it as human as possible because people will feel that people yeah. will feel the human element in uh uh in in songs um and you know if they if you don't feel it you know maybe it's just, uh, it's not right, you know. What's going on? Quick interruption letting you know, this weekend's Milwaukee Metal Fest is brought to you by the one and only Monarch Heavy Records. And monarchheavy.com is the site to go to after the podcast today and get all your favorite releases, new, old, and in between. M-N-R-K. H-E-A-V-Y.com. The promo code is the number of the beast. It's very simple, folks. 666 will get you 15% off. So if you're coming this weekend to Milwaukee Metal Fest, you want to see Sam Nuri open up for yours truly, Justin Friends special set with Yotuma and Sam Nuri. You put in the code 666, the, boom, 15% 15, 15 off. That banner picture is hard as hell too. It's just like a bunch of dudes that look like they live in the mountains standing in front of a mountain. It's metal. So. Monarch Heavy got the new Creeping Death. I wish they were playing Milwaukee Metal Fest. We got to get them for 2024. Definitely MonarchHeavy.com, right. promo code 666. Big thanks to Monarch Heavy for sponsoring the Jossa Show and the Milwaukee Metal Fest. We appreciate them. Also got to tell you about another one of our sponsors, Metal Blade Records. You know them, you love them, and man, they are just, they're just putting out 
fire one fire release after another i love that it's high tide raises all ships in uh, metal right now we got the new death ray vision coming out june 30th you can go to metalblade.com slash death ray vision that's mike d from kill switch's other project they got a new singer keith he sounds amazing the single's uh, awesome if you want to check out the video go to the metal blade youtube page and then pre-order the record at metalblade.com slash death ray vision support some good old new england i don't know what would you call it punk metal Hardcore punk metal? It's all three. I feel like we got way too many labels. Why can't we all just be metal? It's just hard. Just hard, you'll, dude. You'll, you'll, you'll like it. Metalbladerecords.com slash Death Ray Vision. Now back to the show. Yeah. Your style really lends for the... It, it lends well into that misfit sound, too, because it, the, it's almost like you're you're bringing it really together. Like, it's less off the wall, but it feels... Yeah. So so right. I, I I wish that you guys would re-record some of those songs with you on the drums. I know that I know some punk rockers might feel like that's sacrilegious, but that's man. me right there. Those those yeah, it would be amazing to hear that. But man, those albums have such there's there's an air about those albums. There's uh you know, I mean you could Jamie, you know, man. Hey, we're going to the studio. We got four hours, we've got ten songs to record. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been in that situation and it's like, okay, let's go. And then you're recording, you just don't give a fuck and, and just press record and play. And drummers at that time, that's how they were. Those were the drummers that they had. Uh, and there, there's a feeling in those albums and, you know, maybe a live album, you know, but. Um, that would be badass. Yeah, a live one would be cool. Uh, you know, but to re-record those, the, that body of work in a studio uh yeah it would be sacrilegious although who knows yeah did, it's not did they, it's did up they to re- and, and glenn did they record madison square garden or the forum or any of those shows no 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 all you see is what what's online on youtube and whatever okay yeah okay but was there ever talk of like maybe doing new studio material new a new record like, nothing they're just trying to make up for lost time for the from those you know amazing albums and uh you know they're just trying to catch up and uh yeah. you know because those albums i mean they're classic i couldn't believe some of the first uh shows that we played together it was it there was such there was this electricity there's this vibe out in the crowd um you know, I, I witnessed it. I, I was like standing like, you know, stage left, but on the floor in these arenas and just looking out at the crowd, there was just this excitement. Yeah. Then when the band hit the stage, um, you were able, uh, what's rare, because my monitors are fairly loud on, you know, I have drums and guitars and vocals. I don't, you know, play on stage with any ear monitoring or anything like that Mm -hmm. and i was able and i but i wear earplugs so i have a nice uh, i have subwoofer wedge and um and my earplugs and i get a nice little you know uh nice loud uh mix but i'm still able to hear uh, the the crowd sing along to these songs yeah yeah when you know while i'm playing and and I don't play soft. I hit hard. So to, to hear voices over that, which is, I never, not even, you know, around Slayer or, or any other band I played in, I've ever heard the crowd sing as loud as they do with the Misfits. And it's such a celebration. And um, I'm so happy that they put their bullshit behind them and and are now, you know, really enjoying and uh, and, and reaping the rewards of their hard work. Yeah, no, me too. I get chills just thinking about it. And those sing alongs are are the stuff of legend. And then yeah, to see to see every generation who missed it and then the ones who didn't maybe see it also like still hear. Yeah. I mean, there's literally at MSG there's people in their sixties like just oh, yeah. going bananas and it's just so cool. Yeah, yeah. It's unreal, man. So good. Yeah, but we're going um, back to New Jersey. I know I got to try I know I got to try to get there. I was even thinking about, I, I talked to our guitar player, Frank, and he's down in Florida. And I was like, Oh man, are we, maybe I'll fly down for that one too. Yeah. Um, That'd be great. Well, you're more than welcome. 
Thank you. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll hit up Uncle Jer. I, I got, uh, I, I, I owe Uncle Jerry a, a, a call. Anyways, he's. I, I haven't talked to him in a minute. Oh, I was should. gonna. Yeah. I was gonna say, um, how did he, earlier when you know when we were talking about rights of percussion? How did you get it into? like uh the final form and was it and did you know you were going to put it out on ipecac and was there talks with mike about like the <laughs> packaging like that's the old, that's the thing with me where i always i i go to i i hold things up because i want the, the packaging to be a certain way but then i don't want to type out the lyrics and i don't want to forget anybody on the thanks list so i labor over it <laughs> like yeah. so what you do you create an album with no <laughs> lyrics no thanks list, yeah. nothing <laughs> Written, recorded, and produced by Dave Lombardo, mixed by my son, David A. Lombardo. Well, they didn't say that. <laughs> Mastered, done. <laughs> <That's it>. Wow. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> um, you know, it. Uh, after everything was done, um, I started, you know, there was a point where I was starting to count the times. Like, okay, this body of work, how long is it? How, what do I have so far? Do I need to create another piece, another three minute piece, two minute piece, whatever to, to give it at least 40 minutes, you know, 35 to 40 minutes. And, um, and I remember listening to it and, you know, um, going downstairs and telling my wife, it's almost done. We're almost there. And I, I remember walking downstairs many times and saying, I've come across like tuning was a big issue, you know, for me. I wanted it, wanted it to be musical, so I wanted the instruments to have a certain tune, uh, a, a certain tuning. Um, and you know, I would go downstairs. It's like, wow, I've I've just you know not crossed a hurdle, but I've made some breakthrough, and and there is now it just feels more musical than it did before you know all because i changed the pitch of one particular instrument um or or changed the pitch of an entire piece just brought it down just a little bit so when you're going from one song to the other it doesn't feel just you know just one one straight pitch it kind of lowered a little bit so trying to give it as much musical uh, quality as I could, but lyric um, packaging. Uh, one, I always knew that Patton wanted to put something like this out. You know, I I think I surprised him when I said, "All right, man, it's done." It was like, "Whoa, Lombardo, what the fuck?" <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, I can't believe it. Finally, and uh, he was uh, he was really happy for me because you know he you know he was the the, the one that fully supported me in this idea from the beginning. And, you know, he was a big part of opening my mind, um, you know, to avant-garde music, music that is not generally uh, within your genre. Uh, it's music way out of left field, man. It's experimental. And um, I think one of the driving um I think moments for me was to watch Patton release Epic with Faith No More. And his solo album was called Adult Themes uh, for Voices. Um, adult Theme Voices or Adult Theme for Voices. And it's just him being recorded in, in each hotel room that he was in, like Hotel Room 319. Yeah. You know, there's this uh, one one song, it's called, you know, Aliens Having Sex or something. And it's him making these weird uh, uh, voice sounds, you know, and screeches and really bizarre, like humming and sticking a little tiny microphone in his mouth and, and recording that. And uh, so he went from this pop record, or not a pop record, this this hit song, and created this very bizarre left field record from this vocalist that created the song epic yeah and so which left room for him to do whatever the hell he wanted in between that genre you know in between the avant-garde and in between 
you know, like a song like Epic or, or any, or, or an album, you know, like, uh, like, like they did back in the nineties. Yeah. Know? Cause the, yeah, his, his instrument being so versatile and, and like setting two different precedents, which is kind of you. Yeah. I can see you doing the same thing with this and more yeah. drummers and percussionists. I think should do things like this and projects like this where you branch out. Like, I don't even, I mean, I could be wrong here, but I, I feel like there wasn't even a guitar until, I don't know, maybe Interferium or one of the later, like middle songs. Yeah. So when, you were, you, when you were talking about the tuning, I, I remember the guitar coming in and I, I don't remember which track, mm -hmm. but that, you know, to have that feeling of like, wow, what's coming next without guitars is, is cool. Yeah. And then the piano, inter yeah, Interferium was the one with the piano. Okay. Where I lifted up the the piano box and and I lifted up the the cover and I put a um, a weight on the sustain pedal on a grand piano, and then I basically you know stuck my head in the piano box with mallets and created that piece. Um, you know, things like that were, I learned from the early Phantomist days uh, where we would use pieces of wood, set up a mic facing the floor and have these pieces of wood slapping, you know, hitting the floor to create like a slap. Right. And, and it would consist of two microphones, one directly at the pieces of wood hitting the floor and then one maybe 20 feet behind us to get a room sound and uh, blending those sounds together and then incorporating it in the, uh, in the song. Um, so just anything that you can do to be creative, it kind of helps, you know, add to, to the body of work. And the sound. I, I, I just, uh, like I said, I had such a great time. You know, doing it, I, I'd love to do it again. And are you doing uh, like pre orders where, you know, because I'm sure fans are going to want drum heads or they're going to want like pieces that you recorded on or, or sticks or, or like, like you said, when, when you open the, the piano, you, you were actually using mallets with that and you're playing yeah. the beat on the string, like on the, um, on the what actual, do you call those? not on the keys, but inside on the strings. Inside on the strings, yeah. This wasn't me just playing something. No, this was deliberately in the piano box. I mean, I have a video of it, but it's really dark because I told him to shut down the, you know, shut the lights, and I just had uh, a candle uh, in the room. Try, uh, you know, I tried to um, conjure up some demons, but. You know, they might have appeared. I don't know. <laughs> might have scared them away. It's like, what the fuck are you playing, man? <laughs> People could tell. Robert Bashaw, what's up, Rob? He's in the he's in the chat. He says, "Would you say your inspiration comes from a from a darker place?" It definitely does for me. Dark it, times, it fiery emotions. It does. It does for me. Anything that has uh, eerie feel, anything that has uh, impending doom um i gravitate to um you know penderecki you know the composer he dabbled in a lot of very dissonant notes with choirs and um and also george crumb another composer uh, he dabbled in a lot of very dark eerie uh musical movements and uh, I, I enjoy those. Uh, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to, to, to have me sit down and watch a movie because immediately I gravitate to the soundtrack and I don't <laughs> listen to what the people are saying. And, you know, I'm like, uh, I'll ask my wife, what'd they say? What, what, what's going on? <laughs> I'm sorry, I was in the soundtrack, you know, I was listening to what was going on. So, and that's uh that's a you know that's a battle for me you know having you know the uh i guess the attention span um you know to control that to stay focused um is a little difficult sometimes because my mind wanders with music and rhythm 
and any tones, any sounds. It's like, oh, I really like that. I have to remember that. Yeah. And, um, sometimes say, you know, babe, I, I got to go upstairs. I'm I'm having a a musical, um, you know, flood. The floodgates have opened, and I need to try to figure something out upstairs. And uh, and then it's like, okay. I'll let you know how it ends. You know, it's like, yeah, no, I, I could, yeah. I could see you getting the call. I could see like a Scorsese or like, uh, uh you know, uh, so one of these guys, especially if it's anything, I mean, I know that's, it's kind of cliche right now. A lot of, they're, they're doing a lot of, uh, post-apocalyptic or but i but i could see even this being you know a soundtrack to some like thrilling sort of adventure or some sort of dark mysterious adventure slash yeah. thriller um you brought up Pendereki, right he's the one who did that it's like there's it was something for the for the atom bomb or something right like he scored a soundtrack uh, the atom bomb yeah more than likely also um carl heinz stockhausen is another lunatic, you know, and yeah. uh, he, yeah, he, God, he put microphones in a helicopter in, in different, several helicopters and had cellos uh, play as the helicopters were rising and all this is being recorded remotely. And, oh man, it's an amazing, amazing, amazing piece. Uh, I can't remember the title. Uh, yeah, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it's one of my favorite. And that's like that's yeah. those are good examples because that's like people who saw something and made their the vision musical. Yes. Whereas, like with this, the listener is definitely going to create images in their mind, not just yeah. from you know whatever the album art, but definitely because I didn't have the album art at that point while I was listening, you know, I was, Oh no. Oh, it's, um, uh, it's I, I mean, I had it in the email, but it wasn't like, I don't have the physical. So like, I'm just, I'm, I'm in my car or I'm walking. Like I was, t I took a long walk with the dog and I was really immersed in it. And I thought, you know, I was trying to put myself in your shoes and think about you creating it and think about like where you were pulling this from, you know, I, I, yeah. I call it like the cloud or, but, but you yeah. said, you know, you said, you said something that, that really resonated. Like you, you just got to go, you got to go, you got to be alone. And it's like, you're going to get the transmission and then you, yeah. you tinker with it until it becomes something. And yeah, now it's a, now it's something that we and can all listen course, to. What's, what's cool is that then you go back the next day and you listen back and you know, it's a crapshoot. You don't know whether it's going to hit the same way it did that night or, you know, you, you just don't know. It, it could be like, wow, this is, eh, this is okay. You know, it's a good idea, but mm, it didn't hit me like it did when it, when I first thought about it. Yeah. But sometimes you'll go back and listen and you're like, well, this is, this is pretty fucking cool, you know? And then you hold on to it and, you know, you elaborate on that piece and then you create your little body of work and put a little bow on it put it in your hard drive and wait for its turn to be mastered. Yeah. So do you think you'll do like a, a couple live performances for this and maybe include visuals or rent a theater out and do a live stream or, or collaborate no, with. I haven't, I haven't gone that far. There's so many moving parts that I would need to have several percussionists on stage to perform this um you know and i, I don't want to use playback if i do it it would want i would want it to be you know organic yeah. so because of it how you know deep it is musically and uh and rhythmically i don't know that's that's still something um out there that it could be possible i just have to rethink it restructure it or just rethink in my mind and figure out what will be played, what would be playback and would be, you know, because some of the, some of the keyboard sounds or, you know, some of the drones that I used, uh, you know, would have to be on playback. So I, I don't know, you know, that for me would, 
would deter me. Playback would deter me from doing something like that. I would want to keep it as organic as possible. And that would be the challenge is to make sure that it's organic instead of having a, you know, my laptop on stage and press play, play along with it. You know, <laughs> that, that wouldn't be exciting to me. It would be exciting to have an actual orchestra of, of rhythm and, and even, um, you know, keyboards or find a way to replace those drone sounds, uh, you know, uh, with, like with an organ or something with an organ or with, a with even drum with a drum, uh, or, or something, um, with a delay or reverb with a real deep reverb, lengthy reverb and delay on it. Um, so, I mean, there's a possibility, but not now. <laughs> What else? What else you got in the can? You got you, you, What else have you been recording? Anything we can? Uh, I mean, this won't come out for another yeah. week or two, but I, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know when fans. It's funny when fans uh, tell me, "Oh, Lombardo, you should you should play a metal album, or you should you know play some kind of what, what is this music? It should be thrash. Go back to Slayer." <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh, dude, really? Okay, hold on, wait. I just released a, a Dead Cross record. I'm about to release an Empire State Bastard record. Oh, yeah. How was the shows? You were in the UK, right? Yeah, I was in the UK with Simon Neal and Mike Venart from a very popular band uh, in, in the UK called Biffy Clyro. You yeah. know, a lot of us don't know who Biffy Clyro is, but they're massive in the UK. Massive. They, they are, uh, 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 they headline Download yeah. and Glastonbury. Biffy is no uh, joke. Yeah, no, they're, they're like they headline download the next day after Iron Maiden, and you know, so I mean these guys are massive, but Simon Neal, the vocalist for that band, and Mike Renard have a love and an affinity for hardcore music. Yeah, and uh, for the past ten years they've been talking about this, and they hit me up during pandemic, and took a shot in the dark and uh, said, "Well, why not? Let's ask him. He might not want to do it." But they asked. I th first I fell in love with the music. I was like, "Wow, this is this is pretty fucking cool." And you know, odd time changes, and you know, it's a little thrashy. It, it has a little bit of grindcore in it. It's hard to describe. It's its own um, entity. It, it has a personality of its own. And you know, so to give it a description is really difficult. Um, but it is in the hard music vein. And, um, you know, when I heard the music, I was, I was blown away and I agreed, um, and they sent me the files and I recorded it. I recorded the drums in my home studio and I sent it back and, uh, they were pleased and it's going to be out. I hope, I hope sometime in September, but I think we're going to release or re-release the single already, which is Harvest. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's coming out. I have a couple other surprises. You know, people think I don't sleep or rest. <laughs> I have a month off uh, before I start up with Bungle. And um, so, yes, I do. But I spend a lot of time in my studio. Uh, I released a pop rock, uh, pop record with uh, with really? my wife on vocals, uh, Venom Morris, and it's doing pretty well. <laughs> it's on all these uh, playlists and alongside of Taylor Swift and, you know, this dark, it's called uh, Dark... Uh, dark mood category it's almost ah. like this head it's a little okay. bit or this head uh there's a, a song by a uh, blonde shell and uh it's a little bit in that vein uh but you know my wife she doesn't want to tour she doesn't want to do any performances this is just uh just us just writing music and the cool. album called drown in emotion and uh it's a bunch of love ballads, and I'm playing brushes, rim shots, like funky beats. We're going to release an, uh, uh, a video very soon for the last song on the record called So Good. Uh, Tim, Tim Stewart uh, from a band called, hardcore band called Damage, uh, um, he plays on it, on that particular song. And he's also the lead guitar player for, uh, for Lady Gaga. And okay. he toured with uh, with suicidal tendencies several years ago, 
and I fell in love with his guitar playing. It's it's just so good, um, very soulful, and um, it's just brilliant. I've always wanted to you know either jam with him, which we we have you know when we were in suicidal, but you know record something with him, and he knocked it out of the park uh, on that song. It's just beautiful. He really did. Right on. Let's see what else. Um, uh, let's see. One, it's a surprise. I kind of hinted something on my Instagram, <laughs> but that's that'll be coming out maybe later this year. I'm still okay. working. Uh, Empire State Bastard, Mr. Bungle's going on tour. Um, I'm going back to Europe in the UK, play some festivals with Empire, and, uh, and then back in the fall, possibly, and do some more touring with... Uh, um, Mr. Bungle, but then in the summer as well, I have uh, several shows with the Misfits. Cool. Are you going to do any like uh, drum clinics or anything like that? No, man, I'm not a teacher, man. I'm a creator. Right uh, on. Yeah, I, I really I respect teachers and everything, but that's just not my 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 thing, you know. Um, you know, if I had gone to to school and and uh, for for music. Um, and uh, learn the language, I think I, I could have and, and maybe would have continued with teaching or something, doing more drum clinics, but it's just not my thing. I'd rather like hang out with a bunch of dudes in a room and jam and, uh, and be creative that way. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, you know, everybody's, everybody's different. I'm sure there's a demand though, right? Like you get offered them. I like do crazy, right? Yeah, I do. Not not crazy. Uh, I've been asked, but you know, I I kindly decline. It's just no thanks. There was a period I was doing like uh, 2014, 2015. Uh, but man, it's uh, it's uh, it's challenging, you know, to to keep uh, to keep the the kids engaged. And talking to them and you know uh, but then when when i feel like they're not you know responding or you know uh, or i see them drifting i'll just go and, okay i'm gonna solo and i just go yeah. off like 15 minutes <laughs> right yeah okay, you guys awake now <laughs> right on so so do you like the home recording setup better or do you find that it leads to uh extending the overall process because you're not like under the gun to get it done um no uh it doesn't for me because i've learned to to realize the moment the song is done okay there's no more i can do this is it this is what i want this feels good to me I need to put it aside and let it go. Um, so that's something that you teach yourself because you could always change it. You could always make it better in your mind. Uh, yeah, but we should do this. Yeah, but we should do that. And it's just like, it's never ending. You have to learn how to shut that door and, and set it aside and, and, and not and maybe go back to it later. And, and if there's something that is, you know, screaming at you, like saying, yeah, fix me or, or it could, this section could be a little bit better Then, then address it. But you have to learn how to step away. That, that is key because you, <laughs> that is, yeah. I yeah. say you're never you're, truly done. You just walk away. It's you, never yeah. really done. You just No. And, and sometimes you could do more harm to the piece by continually picking at it and tearing it apart um and then when you refer uh, uh reference uh, an original piece you're like whoa this why does this sound or feel so much better than than the final product and it's because you've picked at it so much and, and you know ripped it apart and then put it back together again so many times that you lost that that special element whatever it was um and and sometimes you could revert to it and you know recapture it but a lot of times you know 
once it's gone, you know, it could be as easy as just one instrument or as simple as just one instrument. Uh, and you fine tuned that instrument. And now that was what gave it that special groove or, or vibration or feel. Yeah. I got to tell you about century media dot store. That's the site to go to, to support, the label who is sponsoring, one of the labels who is sponsoring the Milwaukee Metal Fest. They have new releases from Jesus Peace, Frozen Soul, Suicide Silence, Lorna Shore. They're just killing it right now. The new on Earth that Brian's been cranking up. His Dude, neighbors know, your neighbors know the lyrics, on Earth lyrics, without even wanting to. My neighbors don't even speak English and they know the words. <laughs> the Century Media dot store. Support the legendary record label that is supporting not only the Jossa Show, but... Also, Milwaukee Metal Fest. And again, new releases from Frozen Soul, like uh, that album, Glacial Domination, one of the best of the year so far, if not the best of the year. I'm calling it right now. Go crank that up. If you like that bowl thrower style death metal, killing the game. New on Earth, new Jesus piece. Century Media got it going on. Century Media dot store. Big thanks to Century Media Records. Now back to the show. Do you, do you, uh, do you remember where your last show with Slayer was? No. And do you remember? Because because I'm looking at this, I'm looking at your your bungle dates. This because I I go into a venue and I go, did I play here with Slayer? Like that's my gauge of. Yeah. <laughs> like, did we open for Slayer? Here? But I, but what is your? I guess the where I was going with this was, what was your favorite gig with Slayer? Like, if you had to narrow it down to one that you just thought the Jeez. band was just fucking crushing because i saw many with you where i was like i don't know if it'll top this and then you would top it dude the that band the four original members i said this in another interview uh it's like anybody can be replaced i mean we can see it steven tyler and journey uh, not steven tyler i'm sorry uh steven oh perry steven perry steve perry uh, and Journey, uh, you know, and several other musicians throughout history. I just found out that, well, I think I've known this for a while, that Foreigner, there's there's no original members in Foreigner. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, and, and now with Pantera, you know. Uh, but the original members were is the magic. You know, and you, you could bring other musicians to take people's place, but man, there was a chemistry uh, with Slayer that was undoubtedly one of the most uh, intense, um, intense musical marriages to ever exist. Uh, so to nail down just one venue, <laughs> one show, there were so many that were just absolutely brutal. And, and you know, you, you can't, uh, and, and like other bands I play in, there are moments where, you know, it's magical and it, and it just feels so good. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of them and uh, it, it's hard to pinpoint one. You know, I could easily say, oh, big four. No, nah, there, there were others, there were other yeah. shows we had played, you know, where we were headlining. It was our own show. Let's say at uh, at like a not an arena, but more like a club. You know, those shows were were very cool. Or even theaters, uh, the Tabernacle. You know, uh, that that place is really cool. Oh yeah. You know, there's uh, there, there was another venue, uh, the one in Milwaukee, the Rave. The Eagles, the Eagles. Yeah. Though that's, you know, even in Chicago, the Aragon, even though the stage was really high. Oh yeah. As we well, played with you uh, there. That was sick. Yeah, we played there. Uh where yeah. was, um oh what's that one in Detroit? Harpos. Harpos was Harpos. <laughs> you know people were scared for their lives. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Inside and outside the and show. Outside. Yeah, yeah. Cause, cause, cause on your routing for Bungle, like it, you know, I, I don't think I've ever played the Fox theater, but you got two nights there and I'm like, man, you must've played there with Slayer and just fucking destroyed the place. No, I said, you know, there's a lot of places I walked into 
And oh yeah, Slayer played here. It's like, wow, I don't remember. I was going from my bunk to the stage with a Red Bull in hand. You know? <laughs> right. Um, so I, 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 don't, I don't know. There, there's so many, man. It's just... The Ventura show was crazy, too, when we played with you guys in Ventura at that theater. Because you're playing the Fox in Pomona, too, which we we did that like maybe 10 years ago, which was killer. But I mm. love all those places have the best vibes, like yeah. those places that are still standing. They're institutions for rock and metal and all, and, and, and all sorts of different genres but they're just like you walk in and you're like there was blood on the floor after slayer played here. yeah i remember that yeah there was a, a show a hollywood palladium show that slayer played and uh, i took a walk uh you know after you know the crowd had cleared and just to look at the damage <laughs> and man there were so many pools of blood <laughs> You know, it was like a sacrifice had happened. And, uh, but several different ones. And, and it was, it was intense, you know, seeing all that. Uh, but that's, you know, that's only a small, a small part of, you know, the big picture. Uh, Cause there were a lot of places we played that it was, you know, similar, you know, blood on the floor, railings, chairs being ripped out. <laughs> yeah. Like people just just angry. Ah, just it's like, dude, don't do that. We're not going to be able to ever come back, you know. Uh, but I I wanted to ask you after because I didn't get to see you at at, uh, at the Misfits show at Madison Square Garden, but which in it, that in itself was just such a trip. Like I really soaked it all in just watching people watching at the show. That show was incredible. But I I did want to ask you. You know, if you remembered the the show in the in the theater at MSG where Slayer was, oh, at the you, you were famous. Yeah, you were you were you were famously banned, right, from yeah. from MSG, yeah. the theater at MSG. Yeah, the theater at MSG, the Felt Forum, is what it was called that night. That was the show where, um, you know, the fans just started pulling, you know, <laughs> ripping the seat cushions uh, out of the seats. You know, and um, they were throwing them, you know, hurling them across the, the the floor, and and eventually, because of all the dust and and all the crap that was in those seats, uh, I remember this really thick haze covering my vision. It's like, what the hell is all this stuff? And then realizing, <laughs> then a, a seat cushion flies up over me, and I'm having to duck, you know, like this. Whoa, whoa, you know. And uh, and that was an experience, and it got to a point where the fans, I guess, the seats went up closer to the roof or to the ceiling, and so the seats went up, and the people that were sitting on top, close to the ceiling, were starting to rip the uh, you know the the ceiling squares down and throwing those. Oh my god! Like, come on, man. <laughs> It, it was crazy but um yeah. and like not thinking that you know the band is gonna have to cancel like, yeah. like, like <laughs> and we probably had to pay for it you know at that time um there was another time i remember we were playing stadiums and they had chairs in the in the pit and uh the fans as soon as we went on stage yeah. they started getting the chairs they made a nice little pile you know on the side <laughs> And it's like, okay, no, we're going to put these over here. You guys can have them, but we need some space. <laughs> and, uh, space for the and, pit. Yeah, yeah. You don't you don't put seats in a pit, man. You leave that open for the fans to run around and do their thing. For sure, for sure. Well, Dave, I, I'm excited to uh, to see you at either either the Misfit shows or these shows with Bungle. Everybody, go get your tickets. It's May 10th to the uh, 24th, ending with two. two I like that you're doing two shows in each, right? So like the Vegas one is that lineup, by the way, is just bad yeah. shit crazy. What like who, who are you gonna check out at that? Yeah, like who are you gonna go see? Um, because that lineup is bonkers. Were you yeah. were you into any of those bands? Oh fuck yeah. Well, my friends in, in System of a Down love those guys. I love I was yeah. into that band before they were even signed. That's how far and, and actually John and uh, John Dolman and, and Johnny Tempesta and I, we went out to dinner oh, several weeks ago. And uh, 
he said, dude, you were watching us play like the smallest clubs. I said, yeah. And it's because I was really into um, bands um, bringing in their culture into metal. So I was, I was very much into this band called Laberinto that, w that brought in uh, uh, Afro-Caribbean drum rhythms into hardcore music. And it was awesome. That band doesn't exist anymore. And I don't even think they're, that album exists, you know, on sale or anything. Uh, but yeah, it's I not on streaming, right? No, I don't think, no. And, uh, and then I heard of several other bands that were bringing in, you know, uh, some of their culture into hardcore music. And then when I found out that they had brought in some Persian rhythms or, you know, uh, you know they were from Armenia, and Le members are from, some members are from Lebanon, you know, it was, it was like, wow, I got to check these guys out and fell in love with them. You know, we became friends very early on. And so I'm looking forward to seeing them, you know, yeah. and, and right now off the top of my, my head, I don't recall any of the other bands. I think Deftones are playing Corn Melvin. Yeah. Melvin's body count, Seven body. Dust, soul fly ministry. Yeah. I mean, you know, body count. You gotta love Ice T, Will, yeah. Vincent, Ernie, Juan, all those guys. Fuck, man, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be a good hang. Yeah, no, it's 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 gonna be awesome. I I I'm so tempted to go out for that. I want to see Turnstile too. Turnstile is great. Cole Chambers. Yeah. I wanted to get Des back on the podcast. But yeah, that's gonna be fun. And then yeah, ending in um, well, you got two shows in Seattle, and then yeah, ending in in Oakland which is going to be bonkers. So is the, is the bungle lineup the same as the last batch of shows? Yes. Yes. Scott Ian, myself, Trevor, Trey, and Patton. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Get yeah. your tickets now. You can go to, it's, you can go to Ipecac. If there's Ipecac. tickets left. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I think some of these are sold out. Um, Ipecac.com is the site to go to, and you can pre-order Dave's record as well. You'll see it um is there yeah can we what are what are the pre-order packages like can we get sticks can we get a signed head can we get uh, a no, t-shirt <laughs> no uh there is one a location where you can get a signed uh little three by five card um with the album um you could also it's get on vinyl right it's on vinyl as well as CD and download. Um, you could also get another a production if you want to like relax and chill, you know, with your old lady, hang out, have a glass of wine. And, you know, you can pick up the Venomorous uh, album that I played drums and, and, and produced as well. Uh, that's on 3-1-G records. I think all we have is the clear vinyl left. But okay. Have that one, and also oh, the the uh, rights of percussion album. Yeah, there's three different. There's Purple Haze, there's Cigar Smoke, and then the Blood Red, which is uh, it's supposed to be Blood Red, but <laughs> I thought it was going to be Blood Red. <laughs> is it pink? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so cigar kind. Uh, so you'll be able to order those. I, I think those are going to be released on record store day. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. We but got then one. That, was, that was me. Oh man, this is, I like the swirl. <laughs> Let's I want one with the swirl on it and call it blood red. Well, that swirl turned out to be strawberry shortcake. <laughs> <laughs> I love great. it. Uh, um, just, but, just one more question from the chat here. Mike Murray, any chance of any other classical music projects similar to Vivaldi record you did? Uh, no, there isn't. No, I was trying to categorize it. It's like, would this be a little bit classical? But no, uh, no, but there's going to be some, uh, in, in the future, something very dark and drony, very moody, uh, ambient music that I'm going to be releasing with a, a very notable uh, musician that is in that genre. Cool. All right. Later, that's later. I'm still working. I'm only three songs deep in the song. 
in this on this album. So, uh, okay, yeah, it's it, it, it'll it'll come together. It's just going to take a little time. Right on. Well, Dave, thanks so much for the time, man. Great to see you, and congrats on the record. Rights of Percussion, thanks. everybody. Coming out May 5th on Ipecac Recordings. Check it out. And, and yeah, hopefully I'll see you. I'll either I'll see you with Megadeth and Fear. I mean, Misfits, Megadeth, Fear. That's a banger, bro. Yes. That's going to be More so- beer? I can't wait to see Dirk, man, the drummer. He's great. Oh, Dirk's great. Yeah, Dirk's great. Dirk is way cool, man. Can't wait to see him and Kiko. And and James Lomenzo, man, I'm I'm really excited to see James. Um, yeah, James and James and Dirk, man, that's a rhythm section right there. Oh yeah, yeah, it's great, and good to see Dave again. I haven't seen him in a while, so it's going to be great to catch up with him, you know, um, and uh, just see all those guys. It's going to be great. Awesome, appreciate you, man. Take care, and anytime you want to come back, you're more than welcome. And uh, and and we'll make sure we get some uh, get some pre orders in for you. We'll definitely move the needle and and uh, yeah, have a great time with with uh, Bungle. I'll see Scott Ian right after that because he's I'll be out at Milwaukee Metal Fest and Anthrax is headlining day two. Oh, good, so. awesome. awesome, awesome, brother. Well, I'll see you one of those shows. Make sure to hit me up, okay? And uh, I will. Yeah, don't be a stranger. I won't. Thanks so much. Yeah. And I know, I know everybody's going to be like, you didn't, you didn't ask Dave about, we'll get you back on next time. We'll, we'll ask you about your cooking again. Cause everybody loved that last time. Which one? What? Like Which you were, one? I think you were making the carbonara was your, was your pandemic, uh, oh. uh masterpiece. <laughs> what have you been cooking lately then? I'll keep it for 30 more seconds. <laughs> uh, let's see. What was, uh, lately? Oh man. <sighs> Fish tacos. Whoa, really? I love fish tacos, man. Not tilapia, though, right? Like, I don't fuck with tilapia. No, 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 no. I, I usually use cod, you cod. know, fly, flaky, you know, or some halibut. But, oh, man. Yeah, I do like a bastard version of a of a, <laughs> uh, of a fish taco, and it's fucking great, man. I love it. Corn uh, tortilla, flour tortilla? Corn, bro, corn double double corn tortilla roasted on the on the stove like you get the flame going yeah and get a little burnt you know you burn them up a little bit get them a little toasty and you know throw your fish whether you want to grill it or you want to fry it however you want to do it and you put it in your tortilla and you get some cabbage with like a chipotle dressing you yep. whip it up you throw it on top there's salsa avocado maybe tomatoes and uh down it goes <laughs> I had a I had a fish taco not too long ago with a, with peaches in the salsa and it was actually really good. It was like oh, okay, okay, it's almost like almost substituting a mango. Sometimes they do a mango uh, salsa, and uh, so instead peaches. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't sound bad. Right on. All right. I mean, now you got me hungry, but I know, right? <laughs> when you do the cookbook, we'll have you back on, Dave. Oh yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. And we still got to do Lombardo's linguine. If I bring back Chasta Pasta, we got to do oh, it your own. Dude. Oh, wait, man. My linguine and clams is bomb, bro. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Don't get me started on that. We just had Bobby Blitz on talking about linguine and clams, too. Overkill, <laughs> repping for the linguine. Yeah, man. That's that's some good shit right there. We got we to gotta mark it. It's almost like just four ingredients. Hey, you got your linguine, you got your... Uh, uh, your parsley, your pasta, a little bit of starchy water. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. I think almost a little that. garlic, a little, little bit of garlic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, anyway, I'm hungry. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you got to do the cookbook brother. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's going on? Everybody got a new sponsor to tell you about. I'm talking about mango. Think man go. <laughs> they help men get hard and go hard. If you want a new innovative compound that will level up your bedroom game, then you've got to check out Mango. MangoRx.com is the link in the description of today's show. It combines three FDA-approved ingredients, Tadalafil, Sildenafil. It's basically the active ingredients in the C and the V, right? Can we say that? Oh, yeah. But this even, this even has oxytocin and L-arginine to, com- 
to to increase blood flow for optimum per, optimum performance. At the office, Listen, you put on Dave Lombardo's blood album blood. that writes a percussion. You get that beat going. You get that do good do do good do do good right, and then you got the oh, mango yeah. flavor. It's on like Donkey Kong. Go to MangoRx.com and you will save 15% when you use the code GAS15. G-A-S-15. Mango RX. Get it hard. Keep it hard. With Mango RX. Also got to tell you about CenturyMedia.store. That's the site to go to to support the label who is sponsoring, one of the labels who is sponsoring the Milwaukee Metal Fest. They have new releases from Jesus Peace, Frozen Soul, Suicide Silence, Lorna Shore. They're just killing it right now. The new on Earth that Brian's been cranking up. Dude, His neighbors know, your Earth. neighbors know the lyrics, on Earth lyrics, without even wanting to. My neighbors don't even speak English, and they know the words. Centrymedia.store. <laughs> <laughs> Support the legendary record label that is supporting not only the Josta Show, but also Milwaukee Metal Fest. And again, new releases from Frozen Soul. Like uh, that album, Glacial Domination, one of the best of the year so far, if not the best of the year. I'm calling it right now. Go crank that up. If you like that bolt thrower style death metal, killing the game. New on Earth, new Jesus piece. Century Media got it going on. Centurymedia.store. Big thanks to Century Media Records. Now back to the show. Produced by Brian McKay. Executive producers Jake Olszewski, Ben Lee, AJ Lewis, Garrett Keeping, Dan Smith, Nick Torito, JJ Hernandez, Joe Bartovic, Jason Jarvis, Chris Larice, Alex Smolin, Todd McKee, John Blewett, Richard Miller, Kyle Marg, Nate Leffingwell, Morgan Costner, Mark Tag, Zapagor Waikato, Niall Scollard, Kathy D'Ambrosio, Justin Steven, Jack Flanders, the Pit Commander, Andy Wilson, Jeffrey Kuhn, Kimo Humalamaki, Jonathan Metis, Brandon Cooper, Matthew Jankowskis, Jamie Kutcher, Ryan Undercoffler, Matt West, Ryan Maurice, Chad Green, Dallas Hendricks, Jacob Arensberg, Kenneth Moore, Kona Butterflies, Stephen Helm, Richard McIntosh, Jeff Stevenson, Ryan Williams, Larry Tooley, Dallas Bolin, Ryan St, Nathan Rex Madrid, Cameron Hendricks, Scandalous Official, Joe Monson, Let's Talk Resident Evil, Andrew Chase, Guy on the Couch, Chris Winchester, Antonio Reyes, Joe Otson, Dustin Stone, Lee Walker, Ryan Levson, John Hankis, Robert Bushaw, Troy Seal, Mark Horror Armenta, Jay Liberston, Nick Fowler, Mike Horgan, Emma Horgan, Arna Rock, Patrick King, Oscar Brummett, Stacy Steinecke, Fernando Somoza, Patrick O'Brien, Dominique Zimmer, Ryan Sanders, Lara Snyder, Daniel Burt, Milwaukee Metal Sausage, Adam Boss.